Man, What If is such an amazing series. From the tragedy of seeing the Avengers killed, and Doctor Strange becoming sinister, to the hilarious party Thor, the possibilities are endless. Now we know we're getting a season 2 and 3 along with the Gamora episode that unfortunately got left out due to COVID, but here are my top 10 ideas for What If episodes to Marvel Studios. And hey, even if they don't approve these ideas, I can still use them for my own comic series, Dynamic Ramen Heroes. Anyways, let's begin. Number 10! What if Hawkeye sacrificed himself instead of Black Widow? And no episode 8 of What If doesn't count. That's more of a throwaway reference than an actual idea. This idea has plagued me since I watched the Hawkeye series. I've always wondered how this would not only affect the Bartons, These are look at your face. smaller agents, but also Kate Bishop, who looked up to him as a hero. Now when Kate met Clint, he was more of a retired war veteran in the series. And yeah, I get it, he's an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and has been through so much fighting and shit, don't need to tell me twice. If Natasha replaced his position, I would imagine that she would be less veteran and a bit more empowering to Kate. Maybe something like Crystal Dynamics' Avengers. Honestly, this idea could be used for an MCU reboot, as seeing Natasha training Kate would be interesting, and jail really well, but it could work both ways. Hence the reason it doesn't make it this high on the list. It just feels more likely that this idea would come to fruition. But hey, that's just me. What was that? Number 9! What if Leapfrog escaped and became a crime lord? I know this might sound useless since Leapfrog is, well, a joke. Time to rip it and rip it! But let's consider a few things and look back to the source material. Eugene's father is very wealthy, which is how he was able to afford an attorney. In the comics, he's a daredevil villain. So I imagine that he got most of his wealth from doing a lot of crime, which was left unsolved by the cops. Now I imagine that Eugene not only would want to follow his father's footsteps, but also be the next Batman slash Iron Man by traveling around the world, buying or stealing a lot of armory and weaponry, and then becoming the next crime lord. Guys, what do we think about the name Leap Squad? You know, like, Leap Squad. Plus, listen to what he said here in the episode. Listen to, we, we gotta go all out. I'm talking bulletproof shields, fancy AI with a British voice that talks to you. Oh snap! And some of those poison darts like the, like the tree frogs. It would make a lot of sense considering that Tony is now dead, so he would want to be the next Iron Man. Twisting Toji! Although I was outnumbered, I, uh, I could tell that they were afraid of me. So, heck, in Daredevil 4 number 5, there was an armored leapfrog. I mean, it wasn't either Patelios, but could you imagine if that was Eugene flying around causing mayhem? And just for laughs, it would be funny if Armored Leapfrog took out Wilson Fisk so he can become the new kingpin of the crime world. Sometimes family doesn't see eye to eye. Hopefully She-Hulk and Daredevil would be able to stop this tanky monstrosity, but I don't think it would be as difficult or as bulky as the Hulkbuster. <laughs> you guys are so screwed now! Number 8! So there's two ideas, but both of them have the same concept. What if the Scarlet Witch fell in love with someone else? I know that Scarlet Witch and the Vision are mostly known as a couple, and she does go maverick in the comics, but sometimes I wonder. If she fell in love with a different hero, maybe she could have been a better person. Heck, if Quicksilver didn't die, I bet she'd be more happy! Okay, so who should she hook up with? Well, there may or may not be a lot of options, but one suggestion I do have is Spider-Man. And no, I did not pull that idea out of my ass. This gentleman came up with that idea. So you have him to thank for such a wonderful idea. Alright, even if this idea isn't worth exploring, here's the next one. What if Spider-Man and Captain Marvel dated? What if, after Tony's funeral, they just started dating? Now, I know what you're thinking. ARE YOU OUT OF YOU?! But it actually was a thing in the comics, and their interactions date even further than that. That's why their relationship really sticks out in my mind, aside from the other women in Peter's life. Heck, it's the whole reason this scene even exists, and I love it. Hi, I'm Peter Parker. Hey, Peter Parker. 
You got something for me? Now, to an American audience, they wouldn't like that idea. But as a Japanese Hawaiian, I miss the part where that's my problem. Why exactly? Okay, I've said this probably hundreds of times on most of my Japanese related videos, but I'll say it again. Okay, let me start off by saying that according to Japan's laws, under Article 177 of its constitution, the age of consent for sexual activity is 13 years old. 13 years old. There are of course exceptions of this age from prefecture to prefecture, with many of Tokyo's wards actually having an age of consent as high as 17, but I've not seen higher. So. In accordance to their own laws and regulations, high school age isn't so far-fetched. This romantic scenario is called Shotokan, and I'm addicted to it. How did I get into this? Well, it wasn't Genshin Impact, it wasn't Fire Emblem, it wasn't even Disney. It was a little anime called Negima that got me into this. You may think it's a mental problem, but there are far worse things to get obsessed with than Shotokan. Also, while I'm on the subject of Japan, can I just go off on a little rant about how annoyed I am at Marvel for its lack of Japanese representation in not just the MCU, but almost everything they do? Remember the future Avengers? Yeah, aside from the anime and some comics, they haven't appeared in anything else. May as well not exist anymore like Quake. Yeah, remember her? I bet not! And I bet it probably has something to do with the failure of the Inhuman show. Look, it's just an animated series! It's not like I'm asking for Peter and Carol to make out on camera! It's not like I'm asking them to back. Number 7! Here's another two ideas, same concept. What if Paxton was killed by the Yellow Jacket? I like how Paxton, aka this generic police stepfather, thinks he can take down a mentally unstable supervillain with the powers to shrink, possibly grow, and shoot lasers. He's got some pretty big balls, but that doesn't make him the best supporting character in Ant-Man. That honor goes to Luis and the X-Cons. No, 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 not those three wombats. No way. Okay, so what would happen? Well, I guess not a lot, all things considered. I'd imagine that would be pretty traumatic for both Cassie and Maggie. So traumatic that I don't think Darren would ever be forgiven. Next one might have more material to work with. What if ghosts killed Janet? Remember, Janet was almost close to being killed in Ant-Man and the Wasp. So what would happen if Ghost managed to regain her physical form by killing Janet? Well, I imagine that Hank would be really pissed off and go yellow jacket on Ghost. Now, there's two ways this scenario could play out. If Ghost dies, Hank would blame Bill for letting this happen, and the rest of the episode would be Hank, Hope, and Scott dealing with the fact that everything they've done was for nothing. If Hank dies, Ghost would just knock out Ant-Man and the Wasp, and then escape, with her dealing with the fact that she killed a mother, and Hope would have to deal with the fact that now, both of her parents are dead. Whether it's a good idea or not, at least it's something to think about. Number 6 What if Shang-Chi's mother survived? Just imagine her going all out on those thugs, snapping their necks, bashing their skulls onto the pavement, or even using the Ten Rings to blast them into no tomorrow. How awesome and badass would that be? And I also imagine that after the Mandarin sees the aftermath of the battle, he would want to beef up security and have his family train in self-defense. If they can play DDR as a family, I think it would be possible for them to be the most badass family of fighters in all of China. Number 5 now, the next four are going to be Spider-Man themed. I am fully aware that Sony still owns the film rights to Spider-Man, meaning that the MCU would have to get a different voice cast, or chances are they can't utilize the films at all. But they are still a part of the MCU, and not utilizing these films would be a lot of missed opportunities. If only Marvel wasn't a poor company forcing them to sell their beloved IPs to other companies, maybe this wouldn't have to happen. Anyways, the first one is, what if Vulture robbed the Avengers? Remember, the Sokovia Accords were still in motion in Homecoming, meaning that Iron Man only saw Vulture as a small threat. But, what would happen if that small problem turned into a bigger problem, and Peter simply ignored it like Tony made him to do? If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. I'd imagine that Vulture would want to exact his revenge on Stark Industries and the government, using those dangerous weapons against them. And then Tony would not only have to admit that Captain America was right, but also deal with the consequence of how he mentored Spider-Man. Remember, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Number four. 
what if spider-man joined the avengers i would imagine that it would be a bit similar to the comic what if spider-man joined the fantastic four tony would just tell aunt may that peter is now joining his boarding school and i'm sure some of the remaining avengers would have to tutor him so peter can still get his education of course that would mean having to say goodbye to ned unless tony can make an exception for his navigator but hey at least he can wear his iron spider armor pretty early mr stark it smells like a new car in here happy trails kid friday send him home yep oh come on number three what if spider-man kept edith from mysterio this was the very critical moment where peter fucked up so what if Peter kept Edith not only as a way of remembering Tony Stark, but also because he believed that he could still do good in the world by not using his brute force, but his intelligence? That's what makes Spider-Man stand out compared to Sideways. Even if Mysterio doesn't have Edith, he can still do just as much harm as Vulture. He still knows Peter's identity. Plus, not only does he have his projectors, but also his entire production team that would be forced to do the dirty work. I just hope it doesn't end on a bad note. You know, William, one day after I've had to kill Peter Parker because of this, I hope you remember that his blood is on your hands. Number two. What if everyone forgot Spider-Man's real identity, not just Peter Parker? If Peter just decided to go with everyone forgetting his alter ego, then no one would have to die. Superheroes keep their identities a secret for a good reason. It keeps their loved ones safe from danger, or worse, being killed. The less they know, the better. Heck, that's one of my complaints with Common America, along with not being casual friendly. It was fine with some Avengers like Iron Man and Captain America, but for most other heroes, it's not fine. Anyways, if Peter had a safer restart, I wonder what his life would have been like at MIT with MJ and Ned. Chances are he would probably become the next Iron Man. Now before, people didn't like the idea of him becoming the next Iron Man, at least in the main continuity. But since this is what if, that means it's okay because it's not canon. We can still continue with the idea without any repercussions. And if I hear any more complaints from you bad comic book fans about NO SPIDER-MAN SHOULD NEVER BE LIKE IRON MAN IN ANY CONTINUITY, I'm drop kicking you off the Brooklyn Bridge. End of story. Number one. This is probably my biggest and most proudest idea yet. After watching Thor Love and Thunder, I've wondered, what if the mythical gods went to war with the superheroes? In the past, the mythical gods were once hailed as superheroes, but now times have changed. We have superheroes who are better, colorful, unique, have interesting backstories, really cool powers, and they all share the same responsibilities that they hold in the name of justice. So what if Zeus decided to gather an army of gods, who are just as fucked up as him, and go to war trying to slaughter every superhero, and also attempt to sexually assault or seduce superheroines? I know a majority of people didn't like the portrayal of Zeus, but if I'm gonna be honest, I don't think he's that far off from his original source material. I said this in my Inazuma Culture Shock video, and I'll say it again here. Despite Zeus being a well-respected god, he has done some messed up shit from seducing women to wiping out humanity with a single flood. So him being this petty and arrogant isn't that far off. I'm sorry to the people who grew up watching Disney's Hercules and are now being scarred by this, but that is the truth and you need to accept that. Anyways, getting back to the idea, I would imagine this episode being more like the Amazon Prime series that's based on the comic book called The Boys with the mythical gods being the Seven, aka the corrupted superheroes, and the Avengers being the titular team, aka the generic ruffians trying to stop the corrupted superheroes from going too far or something. And this idea should not be dark. Don't make the same mistake that the DCEU, aka Zack Snyder made. Anyone who says that it has to be dark and edgy can go fuck themselves, because they're just as corrupt as the mythical gods themselves. And then trying to deny it just makes it even worse. Do yourselves a favor, go play in the sun, just have fun for once, you know what I'm saying? And those are my ideas for What If Episodes. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I shall see you all next time on the Ramano Taku Show. Bye bye